We're joined in studio by Pusele Zomofugeng, SA Weather Senior Forecaster. Good evening to you and thanks so much for your time, Mr. Mofugeng. Uh, really devastating uh, havoc happening on the roads, properties and people having lost their lives. In, in your assessment, uh, when it comes to early warning systems, was there any way of forewarning uh, or even evacuating people trying to, to prevent uh, the, the level of damage that we've seen? Well, um, first and foremost, condolences to the families that had lost their, their members. And uh, yes, we did issue the warnings um, well ahead in time. Um, as from yesterday, we were already talking about the possibility of heavy rain in the eastern areas of uh, the Eastern Cape, as well as uh, uh, the coast of KwaZulu Natal and the nearby areas. Um, we'd been emphasizing that message even today. The issue is that uh, um, people sometimes do not watch television. Uh, people sometimes don't uh, stick to their radios to hear uh, the warnings or the alerts. And also we access people through Twitter, uh, social media. We do um, um, access people through there. However, I must say that the followership on our side is not as great. So we are still missing a lot of people. Uh, but we hope that uh, a lot more people will actually follow us and uh, get to understand that we are posting um, um, severe weather or, or rather messages of severe weather from time to time. Um, over and above that one, we have the Facebook. Um, it's still quite a new thing. However, uh, we still have, we have a number of people in total. The people who are following us are just about uh, less than 100,000. So that is still uh, a milestone to go. Uh, uh, we still have a long way to go, considering that we have to access as many people as possible in South Africa, close to about 50 million, if possible. But, but I mean, and also we blessed in the sense that South Africa is, has not been prone to natural disasters, earthquakes, etc., and albeit some sporadic incidences. So, how then do you collaborate that, that kind of information and ensure that there is at least law enforcement visibility in areas that are prone or susceptible to, to heavy flooding and, and potential disaster? Well, uh, the important matter is that um, we issue the, uh, the, the weather information directly to the public. We do also uh, make sure that we have a close relationship with the disaster management. Uh, so in that way, uh, we are necessarily able to help the people. I do know that uh, uh, these channels that we use, uh, including the newspaper, the radio and all that, they are just not enough. So we need to find other ways in which we can access the people. And uh, uh, it's not only about when the storms are to happen. It's important to have the type of education that will assist them when things like this do happen. So, yes, uh, we're trying the, the best we can to access the people. We're trying the best we can to educate the people. But it's a matter of them being available when the, educations are, uh, when the education is being passed through. Mm. I mean, I'm reminded of an incident uh, earlier this year, if memory serves, where people were stuck under a bridge, I think it was on the N1, N3 Germiston, and people lost their lives there as well. It, it, it was as if it was something that just happened all of a sudden. People weren't anticipating that the weather could turn so severely. So if we're not having preventative measures or the message is not there to assist people uh, to protect themselves and their property, then it means that there's a, a disjuncture in, in, in the work and coordination with emergency services and yourselves? Well, of course, that is our challenge. Like we are saying, uh, we are there on social media to post what, the, what is to happen. We are there on, on radio to, to actually pass the message through. Uh, we're also there on television, we're there on newspapers, but we still have to find out what, what other uh, way to access the people. That is the challenge. Um, however, uh, I think uh, it cannot be that we will provide all the solutions. People can tell us how else we can access them. In that way, uh, we can actually better the way of communication with them. All right, just tell us about the weather patterns and um, when this, will, this inclement weather will subside, especially if you, the warning says you, you recommend that people stay indoors, are you saying for a few days, a few hours, or how, how, how much more uh, intense is this going to become? I do think that uh, that advice by itself has got a good side and a bad side. For example, if you are in a very weak uh, type of structure, 
it would not be advisable to actually give that uh, uh, that kind of advice because obviously uh, the buildings I saw some of, some of the buildings on social media actually collapsing. So in that way, I cannot actually say that. But when we have a very solid, strong structure, I think that's the way to go, and unless the water comes in. But uh, uh, we have to look at the situation. If perhaps there's no water coming through, you can still stay indoors. But if you are in, the, in, in, a, in a structure that is not solid, uh, I don't think that's a good advice. The good advice is always to go to the higher places to avoid the flooding. Um, yeah, that, that's about the, the, the story. All right. And how, how soon before we see any change in, in weather patterns? Well, I'm not sure I understand the question, but yes, uh, what I can say for now... in terms of the severity now, of the weather conditions we're seeing now, okay. how long will that persist? Indeed, uh, what we are expecting to happen this evening is that the heavy rain, uh, those, flood, that, those flooding conditions that we saw in the southern areas of uh, KwaZulu-Natal, including Deben, are actually going to shift to the northern coast. Um, so, in other words, uh, on the southern areas, we're going to see the easing of of uh, those uh, bad weather conditions. So they are going to shift to the northern areas. Going over to tomorrow, uh, we can expect uh, uh, just remnants of uh, those uh, showers, but no further heavy rain. So I think by tomorrow will be clear. Um, the system that is coming will be uh, obviously on Thursday, another cold front, but it will be very much weak to cause any kind of, uh, or this kind of uh, uh, impact. All right, Mr. Mfukeng, thanks indeed for your time, as always. We're speaking to Pusele Zomo Mfukeng, South African Weather Service Senior Forecaster and also Senior Forecaster for the SABC, broadcasting together we can do more. Thanks uh, indeed uh, for, for sharing your insights. On to other stories, uh, still on the weather patterns, a massive storm that hit uh, Gauteng has claimed at least one life and left a trail of damaged buildings, homes and cars. Frustration and anxiety began to set in as affected residents and business owners try to deal with with the aftermath.